In the realm of studying, tools and techniques are as diverse as the learners themselves. Among them, the Humble Flashcard stands out, not just for its age-old reliability, but its adaptability in today's digital age. Yet, how one crafts a flashcard often sparks a debate, with scholars divided over detail and brevity. As we dive into the intricacies of flashcard making, we'll uncover not only the optimal approach to maximize recall, but also the underlying principles that transform simple cards into powerful allies for knowledge retention. Join me as I unravel the art of efficient study through flashcards. There's a debate in study circles. Some advocate for deep, detailed flashcards, ones that require 5 to 10, 15 minutes apiece to go over. Others favor concise, straight-to-the-point cards for efficiency. Personally, I lean towards speed. However, the essence lies not in the card's detail, but in the initial investment in understanding. Spend quality hours absorbing a topic, and it won't matter whether you create 50 brief cards or five in-depth ones. What counts is constantly revisiting and connecting with the information, ideally supported by a mind map or concept chart crafted during your study phase. Remember, flashcards aren't a primary learning tool. They're reminders, tools for active recall, combating memory decay. They shouldn't replace learning, but complement it. I endorse the minimum information principle, a principle emphasizing clarity and brevity. Whether you're juggling 100 or 10 cards, the goal remains, recall and connect information. Reflecting on my first year of nursing school, I realized one of my biggest mistakes was neglecting the minimum information principle. I initially designed cards with up to like 15 pieces of data, making recall impossible. Despite my well-intentioned efforts, it proved counterproductive. My thought process? Cramming all knowledge into one card seemed efficient. Reality? It was time-consuming and overwhelming. But when I embraced the minimum information principle, creating 15 simple cards instead of one overloaded one, my recall improved drastically. I could breeze through them, reinforcing simpler and more specific aspects of the material. The principle? Brevity is key. A card should elicit short, rapid recall. The longer you ponder over a card, the clearer the need to simplify it. Let's illustrate with an example. Suppose we're focusing on Manila, the capital of the Philippines. An overly detailed card might read, Question. What is Manila? Answer. Manila is the capital and the second most populous city of the Philippines, located on Manila Bay's eastern shore on Luzon. It's a highly urbanized city. As of 2019, it ranks as the world's most densely populated city proper. Established as the country's first chartered city by the Philippine Commission Act number 183 on July 31st, 1901. That's a lot to recall. <laughs> now let's apply the minimum information principle. Question. What's the capital and second most populous city of the Philippines? Answer. Manila. Question. Where is Manila located? Answer. Eastern shore of Manila Bay on Luzon. Question. How was Manila designated as the first chartered city? Answer. The Philippine Commission Act number 183. Question. When was Manila chartered? Answer. July 31st, 1901. Here, we've distilled the information into four concise segments, enabling swifter and sharper recall. Given the constant influx of new material students face, efficiency becomes paramount. While retaining the original detailed card for occasional review might be beneficial, it's wise to skip or suspend it during crunch times to optimize your study sessions. Navigating the world of efficient study, flashcards are still a go-to. Yet, it's not merely about their existence, but how they are crafted. The balance between detail and brevity, depth and speed, determines their efficacy. Embracing the minimum information principle paves the way for optimal recall, ensuring that information doesn't just enter the mind, but firmly plants itself there. As students or lifelong learners, we must continuously refine our techniques, adapting to new insights and needs. By doing so, we not only retain knowledge, but master the art of learning itself, ensuring that every study session, no matter how brief, leaves an indelible mark. 